Hey guys, today's Two Jersey Kid podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash 2JK. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. So just go to audibletrial.com slash 2, the number 2, JK, those letters. Enjoy! What is up, y'all? This is Two Jersey Kids. I just yelled into the mic because the music threw me off. <laughs> but this is Two Jersey Kids, a uh, video game podcast that released every Tuesday and Friday. I am the director of this car crash for this evening, Adam Buckingham, alongside the best stick handler in the video game business, my best friend, the one, the only, Gary Seisel. How are you doing today, Gary? What's happening, everybody? Yeah, that uh, that intro really threw me off, and I'm I'm sitting here actually recording this damn thing, so... I'm doing pretty good. I so I got Horizon Zero uh, Zero Dawn, which we'll be talking oh, about going actually. Going into you know. it right now. Are okay, we? we'll go into it right now. Going into it. it right now. We both got Horizon. I'm pumped about this game. I'm loving it so far. I don't know about you, Gary, but is this the is this the itch? Is this scratching that portion of your body you just couldn't quite get to? It, it really is. It's the the single player experience I've been waiting for. Um, the game, it, it the combat's like so fluid, so mm-hmm. easy to pick up. It's amazing. Oh. I love the uh, the skills that you can acquire. I'm more of the I'm going with the more of the prowler skill set, the stealth Obviously. skill set. Um, exactly. And I I have to say the game ex- exploration wise, like it kind of reminds me of Far Cry a little bit, especially the map. I'm not sure about you if you've picked up on this, but it really does remind me of a Far Cry in some ways, minus the you know crazy machine animals chasing me <laughs> down and trying to kill me. So. Yeah, I've been like, loving it so far. I like uh, the way it uh, feels. At first, I was a little nervous because when you're playing as the uh, I don't know if it's really spoilers, but you start off playing as Aloy as a small young girl. The camera is very zoomed in, but I'm glad once you get uh, when you become older, it actually zooms out farther, so you're not really up close and personal. I wasn't really a fan of that camera angle, but that's that's a random little gripe that makes no sense. But I'm still in the beginning phase. I just got past like the, one of the major plot points that happens in in the game. Um, I don't know how, uh, did you go through, essentially, did you go through the proving yet, Gary? Of course. Now that is intense. I will say that right now. That, yeah. Uh, I like, right now I'm liking the, the, the world building they're setting up with how you have these advanced, uh, machines and advanced weaponry, basically, because the bows aren't just like normal bows. They're like machine built. People have armor that have like old metal on it. I like... I like the world that they're building with different tribes and old history. Uh, they believe in certain uh, gods, so to, so to speak, uh, which I feel like is really fascinating um, when you find out slightly what the gods actually are they're con- talking about. Uh, I just – right now, it's building up an actually interesting story because that's what I've been hearing about a lot with Horizon is that the story itself in an open world is actually fantastic, which is uh, crazy to me. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I've been really interested in. I've been really wanting to find out more about what's going on, or Same. what happened. I guess before, before all this took place. You know, why the why did civilization crumble? Uh, who's behind these machines? Where did they come from? That's like kind of the thing that I'm really trying to figure out what the hell's going on. I'm trying to find like ruins and stuff like that to maybe try to get more of a sto- a backstory on maybe the the lore or get more of the backstory. I guess that's the better phrase, but. Um, yeah, I'm just really fascinated with that sort of thing, and it's been a long time since I've had a game that I actually want to sit down and, and look into, you know, the plot, so mm-hmm. to speak, because I, I've been playing so much of, you know, games that have basically no plot, like Destiny, yeah. for example. Um, so it's, it's refreshing. It really is. I've been really, it was really, exci- I was really excited to uh, actually grab this game, and I was able to because I got it on Amazon, which was a digital, I, I got like a digital code instead of nice. buying it. The physical copy, so and I got you. You know, you can just and buy it on the PlayStation Store. You fucking Neanderthal. I could have. I could have. But, <laughs> uh, I was like, yeah, what the hell with it? Well, see, well, that's a. See, the problem is my PlayStation Store. The account is still tied to my parents' card, so mm-hmm. I have to. I, I'm going to have to switch that out. But on Amazon, I have my my card on there, so that's. I don't want to sidetrack. Buying me a game. <laughs> I don't want to sidetrack from the Horizon talk, but that reminded me that. Uh, that reminded me that. For some reason, it annoys me that the PlayStation Store, when I try to buy something on my laptop, I can't switch to the other card that I had because the per- the first card was originally uh, tied between me and my parents for when I was in college. 
and now I want to switch it to the card that I actually have, but that one card is still the default, and every time I try to switch it, and then it tells me to put in the certain information, it goes back to the default card. I'm like, I can't, I really? can't win here. It's very frustrating, so I have to actually go through, like, actually on my console for it to work. But it's weird, actually. The, I've never had that happen. Back yeah, to the Horizon uh, Zero Dawn, with you talking about how you want to learn more about the lore and everything, I'm... I love the way that they do the audiobooks in it or audio uh, yes. recordings. I really but, enjoy it, right? Especially when you're one, uh, when you're the you're playing as young Aloy and you're collecting all those recordings from the old Metal World ruin uh, of people. Basically, I don't want to spoil anything, but I like the way they're set up. How it's very easy; you can just play it. Because I hate the bullshit where you have to go into the menu and actually play the audiobook, and you can't quit out or you can't do anything else. You have to sit there and listen. I like the ability to hit play and then walk around and explore. It's very uh, Bioshock like, and I love that type of mm-hmm. system where you can you run around and you pick up recordings. I, I like recordings more than I like reading things personally. Yeah. I like just listening to someone you know talk about what's going on in a certain period of time, and I really like how they put that in the very beginning of the game. I think it was really interesting. It got me interested in the story right mm-hmm. from the get-go was hearing, you know, people, well, I'm not going to give away any of the story plots, but it's, it's just very interesting to, to sit there and actually, you know, kind of be drawn into the story so quickly in a game. Sometimes it, it takes longer. I feel like to get into a story in other games that maybe are a little bit slower to start off. That's yeah. sort of thing. Maybe when we finally, uh, can beat the game, we do a spoiler discussion for all you beautiful people out there. Definitely. And maybe yeah. a review. Maybe. Soon. Who knows? Who knows? Depends on how fast we uh, play this game. <laughs> True. True. We, we do uh, I do. It feels like amazing. Like the bow action in the game is fucking awesome. I yes, like the indeed. different, the weaponry, how you can mod. Um, you have different outfits, but they're not like crazy right now anyway. There's not like a, a vest. You can't like change individual pieces. Uh, you just get a whole outfit, makes it straightforward and simple. The skill tree, it seems right now, it seems essential, but maybe maybe I can see day, later on down the line where you keep leveling up and you keep forgetting about putting uh, points into certain skill trees because you already got the ones that you want. Uh, I can see that happening in the future, uh, but I do like the leveling system right now and the skill tree. That is everything seems essential at the moment. I do like. The tactical element that is uh, fighting these machines because they're not as easy as they look. <laughs> That's for sure. If you hit them, in the, uh, you have to hit them at like opportune points. Um, so yeah, I like I like laying down traps and taking taking them out, and I, I look forward to actually fighting. You know, different because I, I think there they there's different robots um, that expand the world, and I'm still at the beginning portion, so I'm excited to journey out and find more. That actually leads me to one point that I had to make, too, is that this game really does a good job at making sure that things aren't really a grind to do, mm-hmm. at least I, in my opinion. I like the fact that I can run around and grab resources at any moment in time, like, you know, if I need something like medicinal yeah. resources so I can heal myself. It's not like I have to go to a certain area of the map and yeah. look around. I can, like, just I can just find – yeah, exactly. So, like, you're not grinding through anything. You can just, you know, gather resources you need on, on the go – while you're on to your next quest, and it's very simple and straightforward. So that's yeah. also a great thing. And also like how game. when you're running, it, instead of you have to look on the mini map to see where it is, and they like blink like in Far Cry, this just like pops up, and it just tells you right exactly where they are. Yep. Makes it rather simple, so you don't have to go grinding constantly or searching for it, uh, looking corresponding to your mini map and everything. Um there was something. Oh, the one thing that I've noticed. I think this is with like all kind, uh, all open world uh, t- style games. When it comes to like dialogue, sometimes, sometimes the faces get a little janky, and maybe that's Gorilla still trying to work out the kinks when it comes to open world. Because I feel like they're for sure with the success and the critical acclaim of Horizon, they are definitely going to be making a second one. I mean, how can you not? Um, this just seems like Gorilla's coming out party because they they originally made the Killzone games, but I mean they Killzone wasn't on as high of a level as is Horizon. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of uh, I know some uh, I forget who made the comparison of like Naughty Dog when they went from Jack to Uncharted that jump. This feels like they made the jump from like Killzone to now Horizon, and now they're on that pedestal of being able to deliver these uh, games because this is the this is the direction that they wanted to take. Yeah, I think that. Like the like with Killzone, I don't think they ever really got their like the, I guess the uh, what do you call it, 
the recognition that it deserved, maybe. Yeah, maybe so, this because Killzone seemed like this is what Sony wanted them to do specifically because they wanted that Halo game. They wanted exactly. to compete with Halo, so they just gave it to a studio. I mean, they did. I think they did a pretty good job with that franchise, and I think they got the most out of it with Shadowfall. I think that's what it's called, um, the last one. But I, I don't think it was Killzone was never going to be exactly as good as horizon i think that that wasn't their talent as you can see now with horizon and uh, i look forward to continue playing this game and then i'm probably gonna be uh, hope, looking for dlc in the future and then wait for it two years or three years down the line hopefully yeah absolutely anything else to say on that point i i think we've i think we said enough for now i think we uh, should maybe leave maybe further discussion for another episode when we get farther in and have uh, yeah comments exactly about it Gary, this is your topic now. Well, not your topic, yeah, but this man. is your segment. You remembered again. Once again, shout out to Moby Games for doing this. Uh, so, as always, it's the This Week in Gaming segment. So, brought to you by Gatorade. Indeed. So, <laughs> but not really. this week's actually very interesting. A lot of great games that are releasing, but I just picked a few out of the uh, list that I found. So, yeah, damn. first up, we have... Brothers in Arms Road to Hill 30 released back in 2005 on the original Xbox. Didn't you play the shit now, out of this game? I did. Well, the funny thing is I played the original Brothers in Arms. I think – is this the original? I'm not entirely sure to be completely honest with you. I, I, could, I can't remember if there was like a – another – like you know, like one of those subtitle things. Okay, thank you. But that game, I remember playing this back in the day. It was really a realistic game. Like they had the suppre- – I think they – I'm pretty sure they had like suppression type – tactics and you really had to kind of think your way through the combat according to wikipedia it is the first one okay well then i had this um (laughs) (laughs) it's been a while folks um so yeah this game was great i was kind of like just it was a realistic shooter and even though i never beat it because i was too young to really understand how to beat anything at the time uh it was still a great game and a lot of fun and also the graphics were amazing for the time period as well next up i have this game was developed by gearbox Apparently so. The people that I, made um, have a Borderlands. That's good. that's pretty cool. I'm sorry, that's there. all I had to add. There you go. Anyway, next up we have possibly one of the greatest sports games of all time, if not the best baseball game in of our all opinion. Time. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. A lot of people think this way. Yeah. So MVP Baseball 2005 was released back this Ooh. week in 2005 as well on PS2 and the Xbox. Now this I game. I love this game. It, yeah, it was really ahead of its time. It's it's amazing. The more and more I I live, uh, the more frustrated I get with sports games because I feel like they kind of just miss the mark in terms yeah. of being creative and having a lot of features. And MVP Baseball, I remember they allowed you to, I believe, build your stadium. If I if yeah, I remember they, correctly, they went intense with that. Yeah, and it was that's like the stuff people loved about that game. Not to mention the gameplay was tremendous. I remember mm-hmm. playing that game with friends, and you know we Manny were Manny Ramirez on the cover. Yeah, I, I used to love that guy until I you know hated yeah. him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was that was a great game, great sports game, and I, I wish that. I just don't. Nowadays, it doesn't seem like base. The only baseball, good baseball game that we get is MLB The Show, which I feel like. It definitely captures the simulation portion of baseball, but it doesn't. MVP Baseball uh, 2005, I feel like, had that good combination of being simulation st- style, but also had that arcadey feel where it wasn't didn't feel like a grind to get through games. You know what I mean? I yeah, I completely understand. And not only that, but I think that over the years now, the show has kind of cooled off. I, I don't think every time I look at that game, like I, I've been thinking about buying it. I think about buying it every single year. But I never do because I feel like it doesn't change enough. Like mm-hmm. they upgrade the graphics and everything. That's great. But I still want I, – I don't know. I just feel like it's always the same thing. And like Road to the Show is fun but not for like that long I feel yeah. like unless you're – That's that's the only reason I get the MLB The Show games is to play Road to the Show where actually MVP Baseball didn't – I don't think had that feature. But I loved actually playing the game. That's what I love yeah. playing about. I love being the actual team whereas MLB – uh, the show, I am just fascinated by Road to the Show because I only care about my one character. It's too much. It feels too much of like a, a legit grind to get through games in that game. In yeah, I, I feel show. you. you, you it's feel the same way with feels? a lot of sports games too. Yeah, it's the same way with a lot of sports games though. Like even NHL. I'm a huge hockey fan, but that game anymore. I mean, I, I like for as many problems as I have with NHL 17 this year, and 
I, I still liked playing that game, but like even like playing as a team, I don't know. It just doesn't like the franchise mode never really has much of an appeal to me anymore. Some of it's just too complicated. You get too much into like ticket sales and stuff, and it's kind of <laughs> just like over the top. I'm like, they, all right, I, whatever. Didn't they have that MVP baseball? They but did, not to but that crazy extent. Yeah, I just feel like everything's so like ridiculously complicated unnecessarily. Mm. But anyway, I mean, we are uh, really spending time on these Man, topics. <laughs> who cares? Next up, last one, is everybody's favorite, except for me. Just kidding. Super Mario 64 released on Nintendo 64 back in 1997. This was Obviously, a pivotal moment in uh, video game history. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's I, I love this game. Yeah. Well, Probably see, fantastic. I never... I never had a Nintendo 64 back in the day. I did have a Game Boy, so I, that's my basically only ever personal interaction oh, with the Super Mario. Oh, it makes sense now. I had a Why Game you Boy. Fucking Are you fucking hate Nintendo? Me? No, that doesn't really give me a, a reason. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're, what you're getting at They shunned you there. in childhood, and now you're shunning him, them in adulthood. I played the Game Boy, which is nope, iconic. Nope, not good enough. Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's that's weak. But this is a pivotal moment in video game history. This is the first time. This is one. The first time 3D was actually utilized in a proper format, um, it showed the exploration in a 3D world. It, it, it had a lot of wonderment. I remember playing it. I don't. I didn't play it. Actually, I did play it on 64, but I think the first time I did play it, um, because surprisingly enough, I got because I was I'm young because I'm 23. And shocking, I'm young. Uh, but I, the first time I legitimately played it was on the, the DS. I think the DS had a version you know, of it. It's funny you say that. I was just looking on my wall over here, and yeah, I actually have played this game, and it was on the DS. You are correct. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I remember playing it on the DS, and I like taking it on the go, but I did play it on the, the Nintendo 64, too. It's hard to go switch from back and forth, um, you know, with the gigantic uh, controller that you need, apparently, three hands to hold. <laughs> Do you remember the, the hype? This is kind of feeding into nintendo but you remember the, the uh, hype surrounding nintendo ds that was insane mm -hmm. the same thing with the psp like there's portable console there's little well portable not really consoles but portable devices like i just remember how do you remember the engadget or whatever it was called the engage what the hell was that <laughs> it was like a, it's supposed to be like a phone but also a gaming system i it never I took off but it looked like the coolest thing in magazines it sounds familiar but i don't really remember <laughs> too well no but yeah i just remember Everybody wanting the PSP, everybody wanting the Nintendo DS, and I just, I never like when, once we bought, like once I got it, I never remember buying that many games for because it. It was just kind of like the DS had the issue of not having that many games. I think at launch, from what I can remember, um, yeah. And then when they launched the DS Lite, and then uh, the yeah the DS Lite, that's when the launch library got or the library got a lot larger, um, and it was lighter, slimmer, you know, all True. around improvement. But is that it, Gary? Can we move on now? That does it for This Week in Gaming, brought to you by, you guessed it, Gatorade. Now you gotta do it in the voice. You gotta do it in the voice. Do it in the fucking voice. You're the guy that does it in the voice. You're, no, you're you the voice do guy. Do it. Brought to you by Gatorade. Thank you. You <laughs> do you it go. better than I do. Moving on to the news. If you wanted to know if you're a PlayStation 4 owner, uh, Pl PlayStation Plus, 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 uh, March lineup has been released. Uh, for PS4, you will get Disc Jam. And also, Tearaway Unfolded. I'm actually excited for Tearaway because I heard it was a really good game. It originally came to Vita. Uh, they did a different, I guess, kind of like a port, but made it somewhat different for the PS4 to use the DualShock 4. Then you have Undernight in Birth coming to the PS3. And Earth Defense Force 2025. Yeah. Gary, you want to break out that PS3? You can uh, get another Earth Defense Force game. Yeah, if you don't... Let me just say this right now to everybody that listens to this podcast currently. If you have never played... An Earth Defense Force game, you are doing yourself a disservice. <laughs> uh, These games are typically very basic. They have horrendous voice acting, but they're unbelievably fun. graphics, but they're oh, yeah. fantastic. Like, oh, yeah. They're amazing. <laughs> Nothing makes sense in these games. Like, you kill things, and they just kind of, like, it, it's bizarre. The, the games are just bizarre, but trust me, I wanna you want to buy them. I want to make the promise to all the Jersey Kids fans out there is if we ever, when we ever get a YouTube show, when we do... Uh, we are going to play through every single one of those games. <laughs> E-D-F! E-D-F! Yes, they chant that in the game, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, come to Vita, 
And uh, this one is crossed by with PS4, shockingly. Well, not shockingly, but it's been happening. Lumo is coming to PS4 with cross by with uh to cross by with PS4 and Vita. You know, that's it. And also a good one for you Vita owners. You actually can get severed for free. Um, for the month of March, I highly suggest that game. I've always wanted to play it. Heard good things. It's like a dungeon crawler, uh, kind of dungeon crawling attack with like swiping and stuff it sounds doesn't sound that great appealing but it is really good uh made by the people that made uh guacamole but uh gary shall i go into the the news i think it's time i think we spent a lot of time in this introduction but you know what it was a great introduction if you don't people like it, it well that's your problem believe that's your me problem. it was the best believe me the Middle Earth Shadow of War teaser trailer is like the Lord of the Rings beast. Well, I don't know what that fucking says. Shame Garton over the Verge, uh, or Games Beat writes. Following an early leak yesterday, Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment and Monolith have officially announced Middle Earth Shadow of War, the sequel to Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, with a cinematic new trailer. Like the first game, Shadow of War is set between The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. It will be picking things up right where Shadow of Mordor were left off with Kalen and uh, Calabrimbor forging a new ring of power to fight against Sauron. The trailer shows some of the new enemies Talon will have to face, including a Balrog, a Nazgul, and of course, lots and lots of orcs. The game will also feature an expansion on the Nemesis system from Shadow of Mordor, with an addition of new enemies, new Nemesis. <laughs> Nemesis, Fortresses, and Followers. Warner Brothers has announced a gameplay unveiling for March 8th. I'm excited for that. Along with the actual game, Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment has already announced extensive DLC and pre-order options, because of course, with four different versions of the game on offer. The Standard Edition includes the standalone game. The Silver Edition adds two Orc tribes to expand the Nemesis system further. The Gold Edition builds on the Silver Edition by including a season pass for the two upcoming story expansions, Blade of Galdorin and the Desolation of Mordor, and the Mithril! Mithril edition comes with the usual assortment of collectible statues, maps, and fancy cases, along with everything else, including the other version. It's a little disheartening to see so much content walled away behind the deluxe edition at the initial announcement of a title, but that's the current state of the industry. It's very true. Middle Earth Shadow of Mortar will be released on August 22nd on Xbox One uh, and Project Scorpio, says PlayStation 4 and PS4 Pro and PC through both Steam and the Windows stores as Xbox Play Anywhere title. That is pretty fucking exciting, especially it's coming out in the middle of summer, when most of the time summer, well, it's actually kind of the end, but summer is very bland with the uh, the games that are being released. It seems like it's just like the fall and the beginning of the spring uh, where uh, a lot of games are released and it's just a cacophony of amazing games where the summer, it's kind of less. But I am personally excited about this game. Uh, Gary, what do you have to say? Oh, well, I have actually never played these games, yeah. but I was wondering... I was going to ask you. There's only you, one game. Well, isn't there going to be two now? Now there's going to be two, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I've never played um, this game before, but if if you wanted to sell me on it, what were like the, the, the good points from this game that you would, For I guess, like, tell people? why you should play this yeah. game? One, it was critically acclaimed. Two, the, game, uh, the combat system was fantastic. Uh, if you ever see the Batman... Um, Batman Arkham uh, games is that style of combat flashing back and forth. The 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 real kicker, which I think you'll get uh, uh, excited about, is the Nemesis system. So there's two like settings in uh, Shadow of Mordor, uh, where if you go into the Nemesis system, there are different levels of like the Orc tribe. I get Orc commanding portions where you have like sergeants, lieutenants. Uh, captains and generals and uh, at a certain point you can like turn the orcs against each other because you can control them you take them out so you're trying to go up the ladder more orcs go in they have their own set of personalities so if you technically so what happened to me is i fought this one orc i forget his name but i fought this orc like four different fucking times and i thought i killed him four different <laughs> fucking times and i thought the third time i finally got him i thought i got him out uh but he they come back with, like, different, like, scars on them, and when they attack you, they, like, mention things that happened in the last battle, uh, like, if they beat you, sometimes with the, the, the really cool thing is I was ambushed by an orc, uh, in an orc party when I was trying to take out somebody else, uh, they ambushed me, the one orc beat me down, but he left me alive, like, he said he didn't want to kill me, um, so, he, 
he then taunts you later on when you come and fight him again because he remembers that. So if you fight them and they win, they go up levels. So they all have different levels, different strengths. That's really cool. That's the, really awesome. The really cool thing, I don't want to, well, not really a spoiler because you get every different orc. There's different orcs out there. But the orc that I fucking fought three times and beat his ass, at the ending there's like this large, because you can build an orc army essentially uh, for where you're attacking later on in the game. I don't want to spoil anything. But when you're going up against the other force, your main rival in the in in the whole game prior to that, so like the orc that you fought the most, you interact with the most, is the heading is leading the final the opposition party. So when you're coming to blows, I saw this fucking guy again <laughs> for like the fourth time. Like, oh my that's god, awesome. I'm gonna bring him down. That and, is awesome. But that's that's the main selling point of that game is the nemesis system and how uh, awesome it is. I like the gameplay, sneaking around and trying to use uh, to take out um, these orc leaders. That when you go higher and higher up, they have very they're very hard to beat because they're not afraid of anything. They're resistant to a lot of things, so you have to work your way to try to figure it out. It's it's fucking awesome. I I love that yeah, game. I, I highly suggest when you're done with. Uh, Horizon, and if you have time before Mass Effect, you should definitely That's check it I'm out. That's what I'm saying. It's it's terrible right now. I, that actually sounds really interesting. I'll, I'll tell you, you kind of you should maybe be a salesman. I'm not really <laughs> sure, but um, that was impressive though. But I, it's going to be a very interesting month because we have Horizon right now. We're playing, and then Mass Effect comes out later this month. It's going to be it's going to be a good time. I'll tell you, I'm really. Mm-hmm. So happy that I have too many games to yeah. play right now. Sometimes it's a drought. It's so, but I do suggest, like, in the summer when there are droughts, and I'm sure this will go on sale because it's gone on uh, multiple yeah, times. I, I'll you take definitely a look. should check, check, uh, check it out. It's a great game. Fantastic game. It was, like, one of the best original, like, uh, current gen games out there. This is the first time it felt like next gen. Um, this was the first, like, exclusive, I think, to this current generation, which is awesome. Um, but the question I have really. I'm really confused why there's four fucking versions of this game already. They're stating I just I, whatever happened to there being just one and and then having a special one where it includes the season pass. I hate money. Fucking, yeah, it's all about money. Um, but the interesting thing with the the trailer it showed that you lost your wraith friend Calibrimbor. Uh, so, but you do have the ring at the end, the ring of power. So I'm wondering if there's gonna be. A differing like gameplay element of it, where the original one you had the wraith powers of running faster. And I'm wondering if this is going to be basically a cop out saying that oh you have the same exact powers because you have the ring, or is this going to be like you have a different play style? It's kind of the same game, but it's slightly variating of your actual abilities and skills. So I'm excited about that. Um, I I honestly could explain to you more after the podcast about how why this game is great because I love this game. <laughs> I, love I can Shadow tell, man. War. I, I never knew. So I I'm excited for Shadow of War. Uh, I like the franchise. But moving on, just FYI, Battlefield 1 will be free to play on PC and Xbox One this weekend, March 3rd at 9 p.m. Pacific Time, and runs through 11.59 p.m. Pacific Time on March 5th. So the people on Eastern Seaboard can get it a little earlier. Do the math, yeah. you know. Uh, Gary, you love this game. Yeah, I'd recommend this game to anybody. And for free, uh, hey, do it. it. If you're a big fan of war games, shooter games, it's like the best thing you can find. It's like every, all the problems you have call, with Call of Duty are basically erased in Battlefield 1. Damn! I mean, granted, take shot so, fired! I mean, it takes a trip back to World War One, and you're basically fighting like realistic battles. The guns are amazing. It's just a great, great war game, great first-person shooter, and it's a blast to play with friends. What are you an, saying? I have an idea. I have an What's idea up? for one of our half episodes. It's not going to be like a discussion. We can do a discussion. It's not going to be an argument. We should go down the line, the list, and go compare each Battlefield and Call of Duty game in the franchise and see which one we would Wins. check off is, is better than the other. I feel see, like that's the, a good a good idea. That would be interesting. However, I have to say that I haven't – before this game, I, mean, I had Battlefield 4, and I really enjoyed the hell out of that game. But – before this one, I, I don't know. I had, like, Battlefield 2, Bad Company. I wasn't a huge fan of the multiplayer. Well, in that, I can talk I about Battlefield Modern Combat, one of the half episodes. I think it's yeah. 25 and a half. It's our first online game experience. I mentioned it. You did. I did. Yeah. But that's the thing. I haven't played many Battlefield games before these uh, past or past few, I guess. So it, it could be slightly biased. But <laughs> I'd be willing to do it, though. What the hell? Why what not? For? Take a chance. yell at us. Uh, on Twitter at Two Jersey Kids, remember to follow us. Whoo! 
uh, before I go into the next article, I wanted to mention, you can please go rate us on iTunes. It's fucking awesome if you do. There will be a link, actually, in the description, so... If you're using, uh, I forget, if you have an Apple device, look in the description. There should be a hyperlink that says rate us, um, basically rate us. You click it, it goes right to the iTunes rating area, so it makes it nice and simple for you. So you can click write a review, give us five stars, hopefully, if you want, or just rate us and uh, give us feedback, th- what you actually think. It would be uh, really helpful, but that's about it. Moving on, PlayStation VR nears one million sold. Wesley Yin Pool over at Eurogamer writes, PlayStation, 4, uh, PlayStation VR sold 915,000 units worldwide as of February 19th, 2017, Sony has announced. The better-than-expected sales figure comes despite unit shortage shortages across the UK following the launch of the device on, in October 2016. Sony said it is increasing production to meet demand and will continue to support developers who make games for PSVR. 2016 was the year virtual reality headsets finally came out from the likes of Oculus, HTC, Valve, and Sony. We don't have official sales figures for the Rift or HTC, but in January 2017, Epic Games founder Tim Sweeney told Gixel that out of the approximately half a million PC VR units sold to date, HTC Vive had outsold Oculus 2 to 1. Before that, back in December 2016, Daisy creator Dean Hall, who has made a VR game called Out of Ammo, spoke about the quote, hard, the hard truth end quote, of VR development, saying the project was very was, quote, very unpredictable, end quote, despite exceeding sales expectation, end quote, selling unusually well compared to many other VA, VR games, end quote. Whew. So, I mean, I could go into the article, but uh, it's it's actually kind of shocking that Sony VR is actually doing pretty well relative to their expectations. I think their the original thoughts for the year or their fiscal year was going to be, what, I think it was uh, 750,000 units. So yeah, I think they're I, exceeding expectations. Color me good. surprised. I... I still don't know where this is going to go necessarily. I guess it depends on how the technology develops over the years. But I know I've been skeptical of it in it pretty much every time we've talked about it because I just don't know if it's really a, a fad right now. But maybe it'll take off in the future once the technology is there and it, and it improves. But I mean, it's encouraging, though, for them to see that this mm-hmm. is selling as well as it is. It's definitely encouraging that they're also having support from developers making games because that's the main issue. That was the main issue with the PlayStation Move. They had no games to go along with it. Like at the end of the article, it was actually good. Uh, I'll say, quote, Currently, there are more than 220 software titles in development for PSVR. Sony added, mentioning Ace Combat 7, Final Fantasy 15, Steel Combat, Tekken 7, Farpoint, and Gran Turismo Sport. It said by the end of 2017, over 100 new software titles and experiences are expected to be released. So that's that's an encouraging sign for uh, PSVR owners is that there's going to be new software and experiences for uh, people that bought this um this VR unit, so they're not going to be left out to dry, which I feel like I, is a good move on Sony's part. I guess the question is, is if maybe the VR eventually will replace like the console type of situ- situation. Like, well, those games, like since those quality established franchises are coming to P or coming to the PSVR, will that draw people to that method of playing? That's the question. I think the only thing on there was like Final Fantasy, Ace Combat makes sense because there hasn't been an Ace Combat game on the actual console for a while, so it makes sense in VR. Final Fantasy 15, I think, is just like a like a two hour experience, like what it's oh, been, like okay. Battlefield so was or Battlefront was. So, I mean, it's not like legitimate franchise. I think in the future, you're going to have different experiences. I think the uh, sitting on a couch playing with a controller is never going to go away because I think there's always going to be a fan base for it. I don't think people uh, are going to throw that away for putting something on your face. I feel like that would be tiring after a while to have something that close to your That's face. That's what I hear. So, I hear it's it's kind of like you get dizzy and your eyes get kind of fatigued because you're constantly like being bombarded with things so close to your face. So. Uh, yeah, man. I'm going to move on to the next article, uh, but uh, unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, it's just one of those, do you hate those websites that just have a shit ton of stuff on it, so it just makes your like computer just run like garbage as you try to open it? Or like stupid bullshit where they autoplay stuff? Oh my god, it's so I hate annoying. that. I hate that with IGN, I'm looking at you. I hate it when you fucking autoplay shit. I just want to look at your, read your fucking article. I don't want to watch the fucking video. It just slows down my computer. <sighs> 
Moving on. Esports expansion. Las Vegas new arena will be dedicated to the sport. Danny Moore's over at International Business Times. This is the first time we've ever used this website, writes. Millennial Esports is opening a 15,000 square foot esports stadium in Las Vegas this Friday. The arena will include everything necessary for a full gaming experience. Internet speeds up to 1 billion bits per second. Three miles worth of cat cable. I think that's how you say it. <laughs> Dozens of gaming systems, monitors, and large screens for spectators to view the action according to SFG. Quote, Las Vegas needs to consistently reinvent itself to remain relevant to the up-and-coming generation, said Seth Shirk, CEO of Fifth Street Gaming, in an interview with SFG. He continues, quote, We've always come up with ways to maintain our position as entertainment as the entertainment capital of the world, end quote. The stadium will have a tunnel for athletes to enter the stadium. Developers hope the atmosphere feels similar to when athletes enter the stadium during events. It should also include, include warm-up areas for teams to prepare themselves for upcoming matches. The stadium itself can seat 200 people and hundreds more can be placed in, different, in a different room with large screens, live streaming each competition. The stadium will open Friday with a three-day Halo World Championship qualifying competition with a grand prize of $50,000. EA will also host a Madden NFL 17 tournament at the stadium later in March. Esports are gathering a large viewing audience. Last year, nearly 323 million people watched coverage of esports events, and that number is expected to grow by 5 million this year, according to the next web. Millennial Esports believes... Vegas is the perfect place to establish a hub for gaming. The stadium will be close to a numerous casinos and accessible, easy accessible to anyone staying on the strip. Betting on esports has also seen massive growth, but the regulation and exact science are yet to be established. When com- competitions are not play- taking place in the stadium, it would be open for casual gamers to come and enjoy the impressive setup. Details regarding the use of facilities are yet to be confirmed. Millennia- millennials are influencing, influencing a change in Vegas. It has always been a spot for business professionals to attend conventions or go away for the weekend. Developing Development of esports in Vegas is now exposing regulars to an entirely new demographic. Gary, I that's interesting. I think it's pretty goddamn awesome. Uh, I don't know about you, but I would love to kind of walk down a tunnel <laughs> into a stadium. I, I, Here I, I, start, I am. <laughs> I started laughing when they mentioned that. I was like, this is all for fucking playing video games. It's kind of cool, but also pretty fucking hilarious. Not only that, but I mean, I think it'd be awesome just that that excitement of playing in front of like 200 people. That's got to be pretty intense. I'm not going to lie. I mean, not <laughs> to mention, not to mention, the first thing that really caught my eye was the, um, I think it's, what is it? The one, the internet connection speed there. What, one it's gigabyte like, down? It's like or what, one, how did it go? It, it, I looked up the lines. It's, it's like one billion bits per second. Basically. Yeah, it's Gigabit. pretty unbelievable. I Excuse me. I, I can't even imagine <laughs> having that type of internet. That'd be all. <laughs> I would, I would be able to download games in about five minutes, maybe, yeah, be nice. maybe even shorter than that. But yeah, really awesome though. I think it. What's going to be interesting to see is if this this decision to build this kind of like stadium, this type of arena, will lead to constructions of other ones in in different like locations. I mean, different. We've, yeah, different we've read cities. stories before about professional like NBA teams getting in on this. True. Yeah. Now there's a stadium in Vegas. I feel like Vegas. Uh, I, I feel like esports is a big thing, especially when it comes to betting. That's like the main money maker. I feel like Vegas sees in this. Um, if it brings in a different demographic, like it was saying, that's also a good good thing for Vegas because more people come into Vegas, they're gonna spend more money when it comes to those casinos. Let's be real. Yes, sir. Uh, should I move on? I think I should move on. Moving on. Not all Switch games will support TV mode. Mike Fahey over at Kotaku writes, Not all Nintendo Switch games are going to take advantage of the console's dual TV slash portable nature. Released last year for iOS and Android, Rhythmic Game Voss is now a Japanese Switch ti- launch title and requires touchscreen to play. Does this mean we're in, in for a flood of tablet ports? The latest game... From mobile developer Rayark, Voss is a lane-based rhythm game where the tracks are dynamic, shifting, and changing as songs play. It's a very neat game with some lively visuals. I've enjoyed it quite a bit on iPad, and today it was announced as Japanese launch title, but does not... Uh, but how does a touch-intensive game work in TV mode? According to the FAQ... Uh, hmm. The company... According to the FAQ accompanying the announcement, that's it. It does not... Uh, The question is, can I play even in TV mode? No, the software cannot play in TV mode. Touch the touchscreen in mobile mode to play the game. Button operation is not available. So that's basically it for that article. 
I don't know about you, but I kind of have like a mixed feeling about this. So on one hand, you're forcing players to play your, I guess, play your game portably. Is that how it goes? So you be playing yeah. with your touch screen, which would be portable. Yeah. So you're forcing people to play that way. But on the other hand, I think it, it might be a good thing because companies that otherwise wouldn't be able to do maybe like a, uh, like a set, like a TV type setup game. Maybe they, yeah. they can, you know, it, it gives them basically a, a bigger, I guess it gives Nintendo more of like a, a bunch of like a companies to choose from. So like more companies that make games, like even portable games can now be on the switch, even if it is yeah. just a portable game. So I don't know if it's that much of a negative thing, mm-hmm. but it's, it's kind of out of the blue, to be honest. I, I, I mean, you know. this makes sense. I, this is a rhythm game. So it really makes sense that it would be only uh, for the touchscreen. Cause I mean, how would you play it? any other way from what the, it looks like the game actually is it looks like you have to touch where the the rhythm yeah. comes down so i mean it makes sense it makes sense so that not to shoot any make any shots fired but i'm gonna shoot some shots um this is a very clickbaity article to be honest let's be real because this Wait. this is like a this is a touch screen game obviously you're gonna this is the game you play on the go you're not gonna sit down on your couch and play a rhythm t- like touch game on the TV screen. I mean, is that just me? I mean, that's yeah, sense. I think I think people are trying to spin this into some sort of negative story because when I first saw yeah. this, I'm like, I'm like, oh, here we go. And then I, I look at the classic article Nintendo like, hater. Oh, uh, yeah. Thinking no, the worst. I, I looked at the, I looked at the, the article and the comments, by the way, and people are freaking out. And I was just like, I don't really know if this is a bad thing. It doesn't affect your other games that you want to play. It's not affecting Zelda. It's not affecting, you know, Super Mario or anything. So I don't really know if it's bad. I just think that it means that you're going to have maybe a greater selection of games to choose from, even if they are just touchscreen games. So mm-hmm. I think it's not a, I don't think it's really a bad thing. And also the question about, does this mean that we're in a flood for tablet ports? I don't think that's going to happen because Nintendo has always been that one company, like even past when in NES, they had to, they put regulations on or quality control on what games were released for the NES. They they take good quality in the games that they want to release on this system. I mean, that's why you hear stories back in the NES, NES days where developers had to change their name so they could release more games for the NES or SNES, which is um, a kind of interesting story if you want to look it up. But uh, yeah, so I don't see a flood of tablet ports coming to the this console anytime soon. So I feel like that's just... Uh, if people are worried about that, I feel like don't. They, I mean, Nintendo has a history of making sure you have quality games on your console, not uh, shitty ports of shitty iPhone games. Let's be real. Moving on. Nintendo Switch Pro Controller will also work on your PC. Ben Chutra over at Polygon writes, The $70 Pro Controller for Nintendo Switch will be a popular accessory when the console is released, as we found that the standard Joy-Con is a bit cramped for some people. When details come to light, that may make that price a bit easier to justify, however, as the Pro Controller also works on your PC. The controller connects using Bluetooth and can't be played and charged at the same time, just FYI. Even Terrible. with a USB cable attached, but it reportedly has no lag when used on PC games. It also works using direct input, which means no X input support at this time, but that's an issue you can work around. So that's a, a kind of interesting uh, tidbit. Shocking with I think Nintendo. Uh, sometimes they don't really uh, are that inclusive with their uh, products, so to speak. So it's kind of interesting now that they they've offered uh, PC support for their controller. So buying that seventy dollar controller actually doesn't seem as bad because then you can use it for your uh, games on PC. I think it's a good thing in that sense, but I, I do think it's kind of bizarre that you can't charge and play at the same time. So it's I mean you're basically at that point you're playing. For a certain period of time, then you have to stop playing with your controller or stop gaming altogether if you hate using your keyboard and then charge your controller. So it's kind of strange that they wouldn't have that functionality. Very, very strange if you ask me, Gary. Moving on, Nintendo Switch is getting a ton of cool indie games. That's exciting. Nintendo says more than 60 indie games will be out for their new console by year's end. Today, they blasted out a list of 17 of them and showed a lot more logos. Some were already announced, regardless of some cool stuff here. Um, I'm going to go through. You have Runner 3, SteamWorld Dig 2, which the first one is really good on PS4, so check it out. Ukulele, that's a... uh, banjo kazooie style game which would be actually kind of cool on the go for the switch blaster master zero pocket rumble flipping death 
Mr. Shifty, Shifty, Wargroove, Stardew Valley. Gary, you're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that would actually kind of be cool on uh, taking it on the go, having that touchscreen, uh, kind of have that mix between portable and playing it like on a PC, uh, more uh, being able to click a certain a proper area instead of have to move around. <laughs> Shakedown, Hawaii. Graceful Explosion Machine, Tumble Seed, <laughs> Overcooked Special Edition. I've heard great things about Overcooked, great co-op game, a little... Uh, uh, crazy too. Also, uh, Escapist Two, the second one in that uh, the original uh, great indie game, uh, Goner, Kingdom Two Crowns, Dan and Dandra. So I mean, sixty games uh, is actually c- kind of great for this this Switch console because um, I feel like indie games are perfect for taking it on the go. Uh, those small bite sized games. Um, I mean, that's what Vita, that's why people love Vita so much. The people that are uh, dedicated to Vita is that they get those specific indie titles that you only see on, well, back in the day, it was only on PC, but then you get them on Vita, and you can play them on the go. I mean, this is kind of exciting for me personally. I don't know about you, Gary. Yeah, I just, again, I, see, it kind of getting back to the point I was making before, it just opens the door for more games to be on Nintendo Switch, which is a good thing. However, I will say I do get a kick out of the people in the comments that are, like, somehow bent out of shape about this they're like oh more ports oh no and it's like a good thing you want well you want games the the more ports thing thing. is like what if the the game never came out it's obviously gonna get ported to the switch if it's that's a good thing well what's stupid is people this one guy made a good point he was like people whine all the time about how there's no third-party games on the system myself included and Yet when there's third-party games that come out for or are getting ported over to Nintendo Switch, everyone starts p- getting pissed off about it because I guess they feel like, oh, it's not Nintendo making these games. Like, what is that even? It doesn't make any sense. So, it's a good thing for Nintendo. They get, you know, more games available to them, uh, especially the indie games. You know, they always seem to do different things, and mm-hmm. it's they're always really interesting. So, different they, experiences, you know. which is always great. Yeah, exactly. Gary, so, did you see games. what is going on with recently? People are apparently taste. I'm not going to read the article. People are tasting like the Nintendo Switch console or the cartridges for some fucking reason. They well, say it tastes I, like awful. I didn't know before today, and frankly, I wish I never knew. Wait, <laughs> maybe, why? Maybe it's why? a childproofing thing. Is that they put it in their mouth? I'm like, ah! Why? I don't, know. I, I don't understand. Who has. Like, it's like me like getting a disc, and it's like, oh, here, let me just taste this fucking Probably. thing real quick. Why does it make any sense? I don't know. Gary, do you know what doesn't taste bad? What? Audiobooks. (laughs) If you guys didn't know, (laughs) the Two Jersey Kids podcast is, uh, you know, we we sponsored, I guess, by Audible.com. So if you want a free trial of Audible, audio, uh, Audible, you know, that that app where you get audiobooks. Sorry, I suck at speaking, so this this promo is going to suck. Sorry, Audible. But you can go to audibletrial.com slash 2, the number 2, J, the letter J, and K. So 2JK. It's very simple. Audibletrial.com slash 2JK. I highly recommend, me personally, is uh, Ready Player One. It was narrated by Will Wheaton. Uh, Fantastic book going back into the 80s video game era um, in a virtual uh, reality-style scavenger hunt, so to speak, with 80 video games sprinkled in. Um, But yeah, if you sign up, Go to audibletrial.com slash 2JK. You can get the Audible book for Ready Player One for free. So, yeah, plug. Moving on to actual articles. Yay, that's exciting. Microsoft announces Xbox Game Pass subscription service. Uh, Wesley Copeland over at IGN writes, Microsoft has announced a new on-demand service Xbox. Xbox Game Pass. Xbox Game Pass offers timed access to a library of Xbox One and Xbox 360 for $9.99 a month. Where it differs from Sony's streaming service, PS Now, is users can download each of the games in the library directly to their Xbox One. Quote, that means continuous full fidelity gameplay without having to worry about streaming, bandwidth, or connectivity issues. End quote, says Microsoft's Phil Spencer. The lineup consists of titles from 2K, uh, 505 Games, Bandai Namco Entertainment, Capcom, Codemasters, Deep Silver, Focus Home Interactive, Sega, SNK Corporation, THQ Nordic uh, Games, and Warner Bros. Specific games include Halo 5 Guardians, Payday 2, NBA 2K16, 
and Soul Calibur 2. Spencer says that there will be access to over 100 Xbox One and 360 games at launch. Every month, we will see new games cycle in and out of the s- subscription. All games found in the Game Pass can be purchased at a discounted price. 20% comes off an Xbox One game, and 10% comes off all available DLC. This is, however, only available when the game is in the Game Pass catalog. Quote, in addition, all Xbox One games in the catalog and related o- add-ons will be available to purchase at an exclusive discount for Xbox Game Pass members. So you can make the games you love part of your permanent library to play whenever you want. Every month, new games will cycle into the subscription with some cycling out, giving you constantly updating the library of games. Xbox Game Pass is your ticket to endless play, end quote. Woo! Xbox Game Pass goes into beta for select members of the Xbox Insiders Program's alpha preview ring starting today. Xbox Live Gold members will also receive access to Xbox Game Pass ahead of it it launching on non-gold users. From the Game Pass FAQ regarding whether the users can retain ownership once their subscription ends, quote, no, the Xbox Game Pass catalog will update with new games being added every month. You need an active Xbox Game Pass subscription to play games. If you love a game currently in the catalog and you want to own it, you can buy it and instantly save 20% off the price of the base game with your Xbox Game Pass membership. Plus, get 10% off any related game add-ons and consumables while the game is still in the Xbox Game Pass catalog. If your subscription expires or is canceled, any games downloaded through Xbox Game Pass will no longer be available. However, progress and achievements will remain attached to your account. All games that you have purchased from Xbox slash Xbox Store will remain in your games library until you manually remove them, end quote. So, that is... uh, I tweeted out on our account that fucking PSNet... PS Now got destroyed. Basically, this Xbox Game Pass, if it works the way it says, basically took a dump on PS Now, stomped it into their face, and then just like you know, used their foot to wipe it on them. Basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It it was. This really is an amazing idea. The more I I read into it, and the more I get to know what it's all about, you can fucking download games. Yeah, it's tremendous. And the fact that you can, the fact that you can just. This is the way I look at it personally. You know, you get to go on to the service. You obviously pay a, a subscription fee. But you get to choose, you get to play all these games for a really cheap price, yeah. and if you like them, you get to buy them for 20% off, and then you get additional discounts on the add-ons and the DLC. Like, that's amazing. That's fantastic. So, yeah, and that if was you the thing. you had the subscription, you could play it for that whole month, and yeah. if you really, if you didn't beat the game in that month, you can then buy it for 20% off right before it leaves the catalog. If it does leave the catalog, that is. They're not rotating out, I don't think all hundred of those games. So there's going to be a few rotating in and out, and I'm sure they'll give you advance notice like Netflix does when the um, these titles will be moved on. Yeah, it's a very, very great idea for the uh, great decision by them. I was, when I first heard about this, I was wondering what kind of games would be available, you know, for this service. I was like, I wonder if it's going to be like a few really good games and the rest are kind of like a bunch of average titles. But I mean, when I looked at the the lineup, I mean, you have Halo 5, like you said, Saints Row, NBA 2K16, a lot of great games here. Funny that you mentioned that. Uh, uh, I don't see the uh, the author. But over at COG Gaming or COGConnective.com, they have a list of 32 games right now that they have for Xbox Game Pass. So I'll just go through it right now and read them. You like that, Gary? Okay. Right. A Kingdom for Keflings, Banjo-Kazooie, Comic Jumper, Dark Void, Defense Grid 2, Gears of War Judgment, Gears of War Ultimate Edition, that's good, Halo Spartan Assault, Hexic 2, Jetpack Refueled, Cameo, love Cameo, Max the Cursed Brotherhood, Monday Night Combat, M- or Miss Splosion Man, OF Dragon Rising, Perfect Dark Zero, <laughs> Sacred yeah. 3, Sam and Max Beyond Time, Sunset Overdrive, now that's a fucking fantastic game, The Mall, Viva Pinata, Halo 5, Saints Row 4, Mad Max, uh, NBA 2K16, Lego Batman, Mega Man Collection, Terraria, Payday 2, Fable 3, and Tekken Tag Tournament 2. Now, there are some freaking great games in that list, which is shocking. Yeah, I, let's put it this way. I mean, if you haven't played them, you're going to have a long... You're going to have plenty of games to play in the next you know month or so. It's going to be... Yeah, it's a great, it's a great service. So I'm very question, impressed. The one question that I was actually having is... Um, 
will this eliminate games with gold, which I think a lot of people are having? But Mike Yabara on Twitter, the he's the corporate uh, vice president of Xbox and Windows gaming platform at Microsoft. That's according to his title. He put on Twitter, quote, games with gold continues. Xbox Game Pass is not a replacement for that. Great games and benefits with good with gold continue, end quote. That's basically it. And the one really thing that I, that I thought was shocking is that they uh, Xbox Live Gold members will also... The quote where it says, quote, Xbox Live Gold members will also receive access to Xbox Game Pass ahead of it launching to non-gold users. Now, that I feel like is crucial. This is going to non-gold users. So people, well, I think you still need access to internet, but people that don't want to pay that 60 bucks a year um, to be a gold member, um, which... I mean, before this kind of made no sense, but I mean, they don't really want they don't want gold because they don't really play with anybody online. Being a non gold member and paying for this like Netflix style service, I mean, I think that's fucking awesome. It is tremendous. Your move, Sony. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Microsoft just shat the bed on you. I like I said yeah. before. It's really unfortunate, actually. Because the, the, the main issue with PS Now is that the connectivity and it, it's all streaming. It's not. Uh, it's not if you don't have a good enough Wi-Fi connection, which I don't yeah, think a that's... lot of people can have that connection just quite yet. It's going to move and have input lag. Well, not input lag, but it's going to have lag in general, especially for those first-person games. This you download directly to your console. There's not going to be like they mentioned. There's, there's not going to be that slow connection that. Uh, Issues with streaming the game is just going to be fluid, which is awesome. But I digress. We are sucking Microsoft's dick right now. Moving on, Ubisoft announces new game based on James Cameron's avatar from the Division developer. Andrew Goldfarb over at IGN writes, Ubisoft has announced that Division developer Massive Entertainment is currently working on a game based on the world of James Cameron's avatar. Massive is working alongside Fox Interactive and James Cameron Studio Lightstorm Entertainment, and the game will be built in the Snowdrop engine that powered the division. Ubisoft said the game will be headed to PC and consoles, but didn't name any specific platforms yet. No plot details were revealed, but Ubisoft said in a statement that the game will, quote, the game, quote, will continue to expand and deepen in the Avatar universe in exciting and innovative ways along with the films. With the, pa- the power of the massive snowdrop engine and the team's passion and obsessive focus on detail, we know they're the right group to bring the beauty and danger of Pandora to life, end quote, Cameron said in a video accompanying the announcement. No release date has been announced yet, nor has a specific title or any details about gameplay. This is just weird to me that they're choosing the Division, uh developers to make this game why not are they going to also be working on division 2 i feel like that's the right direction you need to go in especially with division success why are you fucking doing an avatar game i don't know if it'll be great but i mean you know well, apparently division 2 will sell i don't know apparently there's actually already a, another avatar game out now that apparently wasn't that wasn't really good at all was so it, I, I mean was it developed by uh ubisoft I don't know, but I'm reading. I'm only reason I know this is because I'm reading the comments section. Classic. But it's just, I Avatar. Eh, I don't know. I mean, the movie was pretty good. I watched it years ago. Now I there barely it remember it, it. It's called James Cameron Avatar: The Game, developed by yeah. Ubisoft. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Oh, so man. I mean, it, the first one wasn't really good. Maybe they'll get it right this time. Like you said, it is kind of strange considering they have the division, which is. Pretty important to them right now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you, you, you'd figure they'd try to improve on that. Just saying. I'm not really a CEO yet. And you but, don't yeah. really like the division that much, but you see that it people do love it, so why oh, yeah. take it? Take the, the important developer away from it? Well, it's like, why continue to work on something that didn't do, do that well when you could be improving something that sold very well out of the gate and they can get better? It's just yeah, kind of a... Expanding on the universe, learn what you, your mistakes were. Oh. And, and like, why not just do something original either? You know, I have to say that too. It's like, why are we? I mean, that's I'm why we like with, Horizon Zero Dawn is it's original. Yeah, it's well, that's the, and that's the thing. I'm agreeing with some of these people down here. It's like, why do people get so hyped when they find out that there's a a movie game tie-in Sorry. coming out? Like, you know, like a movie game thing coming out. I, I don't know either. It's kind of strange. I guess I'm kind of hypocritical right now because there's I'm really about <laughs> Star Wars games, but at the same time, it's but, I mean, a those, little different. Those, those Star Wars games aren't like. A, Specifically about one. Yeah, movie. it's original. Yeah, it's like exactly. Different content in exactly. like Kotor is not anywhere close to the actual movies. Let's be See, real. I got you know, we, I got back to Kotor. <laughs> it's I want to make <laughs> a <laughs> meme <laughs> for myself. Actually, I'm gonna get someone to take a picture of me doing this, like kind of that same 
like uh, motion that that guy does in Aliens, and yeah, then like I want to make a meme of myself. Ancient, yeah, it's, it's Aliens. Gonna, <laughs> it, it, that made it's me happen. laugh so much. KOTOR 2 or KOTOR 3, it's happening. That's what it should be. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> Moving on, EA Dex teases Star Wars Battlefront 2, Jay Raymond's action game, and a new Bioware game. Eddie Machuch over at GameSpot writes, Speaking during the uh, Morgan Stanley Technology Media and Telecom Conference, that's a fucking long-ass name, uh, today, EA CFO Blake Jorgensen shared some new commentary on Star Wars Battlefront 2 and other EA games. For the Battlefront sequel... Which has been confirmed but not officially announced. Jorgensen said the game is, quote, dramatically larger, end quote, than the 2015 game, original. The game will feature, quote, a lot of new characters, end quote, that come from the newer Star Wars movies. movies uh, Jorgensen teased. The 2015 Battlefront features characters and content from the original Star Wars movie as well as Star Wars Rogue Run, which is the prequel to the 1977 original, if you guys for some reason didn't know. Quote, the Star Wars universe is just unbelievable to build games in because it's so vast. Uh... Jorgensen said, The untitled Battlefront sequel will also have a single-player campaign which is being made by Motive Studios. On the subject of Bioware's new, Bioware's mystery new IP, Jorgensen teased that this will be, quote, more sci-fi related, end quote. This follows from what EA CEO Andrew Wilson said earlier this year, quote, When you think about this game, you should think about you should be thinking about the great RPG character development and storyline progression that Bioware is known for. But in a world of greater action and greater adventure, which is growing to be one of the larger categories in game, end quote, he said. Also during the call, Jorgensen offered a number of other EA updates, up, uh, EA's upcoming games, and more. Here are some takeaways. They have many of the elements that made FIFA 17 successful will be added to Madden NFL 18. This could be a reference to FIFA 17's The Journey single player mode. Madden 18 will be made using Frostbite. Battlefield 1 is seeing, quote, fantastic, end quote, engagement levels. It's, quote, very early days, end quote, for Assassin's Creed producer Jay Raymond's new action game, but the goal is for it to become a new franchise. Losing Peter Moore is a big deal, but it was a good opportunity for Moore to take his dream job of becoming the CEO of Liverpool FC, which is kind of cool, and... Gary, I'm sure you're excited about this. The new Star Wars action game will be, quote, exploration-based, end quote. Confirmed! No Man's Sky crossed with Star Wars! I would, I would die if that was the case. Of course, if it was as bland as No Man's Sky, unfortunately, was, oh, that'd be a disaster. Oh, shit! But, Everyone, though! Dude, I I mean, Battlefield, like, Battlefront 1, or, god damn it, Battlefront 2, uh, hearing about that was exciting. But when I kind of scrolled down and saw that, that, Thing at the very bottom of the list, I was Door like, three. holy it's shit, dude, <laughs> even if it isn't, the fact that it's aspiration based, I mean, they need to get to that. Like, it's such a missed opportunity for these game studios. I hope, I hope they do it right. It would be so awesome to play a game like that again, especially in a Star Wars universe. How I can just you had the wrong? dream of doing like a live show of us once, like at like a convention center when we get that large, because that's what's gonna happen. <laughs> Is that people randomly when we start uh, talking about like Star Wars content, we'll have people in the fans that know us so well. They'll just shout out Kotor three. Yeah, I'll be very dream. pissed off because it never was released for some reason. <laughs> Uh, moving on. This is very interesting. I I think uh, I'm sure you'll feel the same way. Twitch will sell games this spring. Streamers can earn a cut. Robert Purchase over at Your Gamer Rights. Twitch will directly sell games and game content starting this spring. Games will be downloaded and play via the Twitch launcher and through existing platforms such as Uplay. Because everyone loves fucking Uplay. <laughs> Sorry. Twitch streamers will be able to earn a cut, a small 5% cut, when sales originate on their channel. Twitch will also incentivize buying, incentivize buying by rewarding Twitch creates packing a random assortment of Twitch goodies such as remotes, badges, and bits. Twitch said there will be dozens of games available this spring, citing Ubisoft, Paradox, Telltale, Digital Extreme, which uh, does Warframe, High Res, which does Smite and Paladins, Tiny Build, which does Hell or Neighbor, uh, Vambril, which does Nuclear Throne, Treon, which does Rift and Defiance, quote, and many more, end quote. Developers will earn a 70% cut for games sold via Twitch, same as on Steam. Now, this is very interesting that Amazon is finally integrating their uh, ability into Twitch, sort of giving a way to promote games or things that they're selling. Because right now, you've seen Amazon sort of stand back and letting Twitch... They've done, like, I think, updates to it, but they just let Twitch be Twitch. Now they're adding, like, incrementing little things to it. I don't know. What do you think, Gary? 
Well, I think that their name, the thing about Twitch is that they have obviously a big name, very recognizable. It, they may actually be able to challenge a, a company like Steam. I think it's very possible. But the one thing I found interesting, so, you know, I was reading, we were obviously reading about, you know, all the aspects of this of this new thing that they're doing. I know some people are worried about the fact now that streamers, if they're like yeah. supposed to be promoting a game, they may just hold back any negative opinions about it just to sell the game more, which that could be kind of shitty. Yeah, but I mean, there, there is the point as in if you're watching that streamer and they're making these points at it, you can actually see the game that's being run. True. So you True. can't you can call them out on their bullshit when there's obviously issues with the game. So yeah, and I I don't think I mean any self respecting streamer that. You know, it's a streamer. He's yeah. He or she needs that needs that needs the viewers. You know, to obviously yeah. make the money. So they're not going to just throw away all that just Unless to say, "Oh, this game's bastards. great." Yeah, exactly. Unless they're like so, they're selling themselves <laughs> out. You know. Well, I mean, but, I, I feel like most streamers, I I believe, uh, would just play the game and just have. I guess would have an icon or however it's going to be sold of what game is actually playing. And people say like, "Oh, this is interesting." They're just hanging out with their streamer. Like, "Oh, I kind of want to buy this game," so they. They click yeah. it. I don't think the streamers are going to actually promote it. They may say at the beginning of the stream, hey, you can, or periodically, hey, if you really like what I'm playing, you can check it out with this link uh, attached in the right corner or whatever of the stream. I don't know. Yeah, I think, well, bump my mic there. Uh, okay. No, I, I did it earlier. I think, I think that, um, I, I think that's logical. I think that's yeah, what's going mean, to happen. I, I don't think it's going to be like this crazy people, thing where. The people getting outraged over this and like. You can fucking see with your eyes if they're obviously just bullshitting you. Call them out on it. I mean, use your brain. I'm sorry, but use it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Moving man. on. Final article. Golden Cartridge. Uh, you can go find go to goldencartridge.com. They have really good stuff, and we like highlighting some of their articles. Uh, so this title's uh, the Pine Greenlight campaign has been launched. Ryan Donovan, who writes every article, which is fucking amazing that he does that uh, over at Golden Cartridge, writes not many games on Greenlight are worthy, but Pine looks like it has everything it needs to be to be an amazing game. To some, it may look a little rough around the edges. Animations may look a little wonky. Character design is lackluster, and trailer really does not give you much uh, into what you will be doing. But this is only the beginning for Pine. The game was recently released on Steam Greenlight to build up some hype around it before it launches to Kickstarter. Now, some people may look at this trailer and critique the hell of it, but to be honest, a lot of Kickstarter games rarely come in with graphics looking this nice. The aesthetics of this game are already phenomenal, leaving it it more open to future development and polish than to have to create a whole world with the money they will be asking for. This game will feature an intuitive AI system that adapts to the player. The game recognizes your patterns and style of play and its creatures and world react and adapt to you specifically. This will play a key role in a uh, living, breathing world you will be thrown into. Creatures will understand the principles of survival and do anything to attain this. Be prepared to see certain animals go into extinction while others thrive. Dynamic weather will play as an ally or an enemy as you try to survive these harsh environments. You will need to shelter, but luckily you will not be empty-handed when trying to create one. Tools will be at your disposal to not only interact with the world, but also help you fight the creatures lurking in the grass. Scare away creatures with the igniter, make your way across large gaps with the amazing air glider, or scale high cliff using the strong climbing axes. Overall, the pine has a long way to go with development, but shows promise with what has to to offer Ooh, what it has to offer sorry this is one that actually deserves the attention it has been getting as the game is already showing some of the larger mechanics as, as working and gives a lot of backers and confidence that this team knows exactly what they are doing please check out the pine gameplay and vote yes if you like what you see so if you're on steam and you want to vote for this game go vote for it yeah it looks pretty cool actually i like the uh like the guy like he says here in this article i like the the art style, but also the graphics are really polished. It doesn't look like it's a. It doesn't look like a game in development. It kind of looks like a game that's already been released. To be completely it, honestly, honest, honestly, it, so. of, it kind of looks like um, one of the uh, one of the games that I reviewed. You can go to twojerseykids dot com and check it out. This is the Earthlock uh, Festival of Magic. Ah, uh, yeah, actually, you're right. Uh, yeah. But since this is early in development, I mean, like you said, he said, they have time to polish it if they do get green lit and have a Kickstarter. And that's the thing, yeah, with the. The way the graphics are and everything, I like, like you were saying, the mechanics and everything, maybe any issues they have with that, they can focus more on making the gameplay really good instead of just uh, having to rework you yeah. know, the graphics and everything. So, yeah, check it out, Golden Cartridge. And the website, 
is working this time. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, Ryan. I know it's probably a pain to get actual. Ours is like a blog site, so <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's even more difficult much. with an actual <laughs> website. So, good job. Uh, but that has been all the news for this week, Gary. I'm gonna ask what you plan on be doing. What do you plan on doing this weekend or this week or whatever we're doing next? But I'm pretty certain I already know what you're gonna be doing. Let, yeah. let me guess: Battlefield One, <coughs> maybe some Destiny, and for sure some Horizon. Well, yeah, Horizon first for sure. I'll be probably be playing <laughs> way more of, uh, of Horizon than I will be playing, you know, Battlefield One and Destiny. So, uh, yeah, I, you know, I just, I've been wanting that single player thing for a while. So I'll be focusing on horizon primarily and, you know, obviously playing, uh, battlefield one and everything just to hang out with the friends and keep up with everything. So that's yeah. what I'm going to be doing. But, Get uh, out. what's, what's on the, uh, the schedule here for you anyway, for me, I plan on playing some more horizon zero dawn. Um, I also, I realized as playing this game is that I played Neo so long that it's it was kind of hard for me to get used to the controls of like dodging because I was hitting the wrong button. I was like, shit, or like sprinting. So it's going to be interesting once I beat Horizon and go back to Neo and see how many times I die when I play that game because <laughs> I'm not yeah. used to the controls. The one thing that threw me off about the controls in Horizon was the square to crouch. Yeah, I keep that's pressing weird. circle. I keep pressing circle, goddammit. Really, I don't get why games don't let you just button map your controller just with whatever you want. Yeah. That's what I really don't get, and I really want that. Yeah. Like I mean, or, I, would, I don't I would, know. Why I would, don't games? I literally just wanted to switch the roll and or what's roll in this game? Circle? Yeah. I wanted yeah. to switch. I wanted to switch square, the crouch with circle. That's all I wanted yeah. to do. That's all it's, I wanted to do. I just like. I kind of wish that gaming studios would just kind of follow a similar controller scheme, like a lot of other like they follow the other. Or, you know, like it doesn't even have that they have to follow it. They just let it. Let, yeah, like, button mapping's easier. Button yeah. mapping, letting like the software be able to button map it. Like having, I really wish. Uh, I don't know if it does, but letting uh, Sony or PSN have the software where it just literally takes the input of one button and transfer it over for the game to register as another. I mean, it seems easy, <laughs> but what the fuck do I know when it comes to that stuff? I mean, you can do that. That's the one thing about uh, Steam is you get a controller, you can button map it whichever way you want, which is fucking awesome. PC Master Race, right? Yep. Fuck those guys. But that has been episode 27 of Two Jersey Kids. I don't know about you, Gary, but this felt like a real good episode. You guys are lucky. I, I felt awesome. This frankly. felt fucking I, phenomenal. Uh, fun fact, last episode, I was decaffeinated. I had not had any caffeine, so... It's just a, I don't feel right when I don't have my coffee, <laughs> and it really it, it it doesn't it doesn't bode well for me when I don't have my coffee. So, good episode tonight. I'm really excited about it. Um, some final words actually before I leave. So, I don't know. Uh, that's pretty much all I have to say. <laughs> you said some final words before yeah, you leave. I, I was gonna have final words, but then I kind of like you know what I you just kind of out. <laughs> I didn't really have much else to say. Anyway, just uh, you know, thanks for listening tonight. Or today, whenever, wherever you are, whatever time it is, uh, we really appreciate it. You know, we got to thousand downloads last month. Looking yeah, to almost got to eleven hundred actually, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I know. Adam said he, he actually told me the other day that he had a dream that we got a thousand downloads last month. But we're going to get twelve thousand yeah. this month. So that's Make one hell happen. of a jump. Um, <laughs> needless to say, I want you people to tell your you know, your parents, your grandparents, great grandparents, <laughs> d- distant ancestors, twelfth cousin, twice removed. Yeah, tell them know, all. Something. Yeah, just tell everybody you know. Yeah, and, uh, get, them, get them into the two Jersey kids fan zone. We appreciate it. So I that's concur. all I gotta say. And uh, I'll catch you all on the flippity flip on Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. Yeah, this has been Two Jersey Kids. Please follow us on Twitter at Two Jersey Kids. You can email us or tweet us questions. Uh, email is Two Jersey Kids at gmail dot com or tweet us. You know. I said at Two Dirty Kids already, but you we release episodes every Tuesday and Friday. Um, you listen to the past episode if you want more of Adam and Gary, because who doesn't want more A and G? Let's be real. <laughs> but you can listen to episode twenty six and a half, where we go into games we think are overrated, or as Gary liked to put it, because he didn't want to piss people off, games that he wished he got into but he never did, but other people did. Um, but I, I make some very pointed remarks about certain games that are, it's, I fucking hate them, let's be real, I, I think they're overrated, but 
This has been uh, episode 27. Thank you so much for listening. Remember, if you love us so much, please share us on Twitter or share us with your friends that really love video games. Uh, please, if you're a new listener, hit that subscribe button. And also, if you really love us so much, uh, there's a link in the description where it says rate us. Just click that section, and it'll take you to the iTunes, if you have an Apple device anyway. It takes you to the iTunes rating area where you can just write us a review. It'd be freaking awesome if you did that, honestly. Uh, help us out a lot. Um, but other than that, uh, I'm going to say bye, but Gary, say bye first. Peace. All right, y'all. Keep playing those games. See you on the flip flip Bye.